Welcome everybody to today's Silver Bay YMCA devotional. Uh, we're grateful that you've chosen to spend some time with us today as we look at God's word and sing and pray. Uh, I'm joined as always by my colleague Bruce Tamlin, our chaplain, and Austin Porth, our uh, digital marketing specialist. I think that's his title, it's very fancy. But we're grateful, we couldn't do it without him. And so uh, the three of us welcome you here to the historic inn at Silver Bay. Uh, right in the center of campus uh, by the fireplace here. Uh, it is winter here at Silver Bay. Um, uh, we don't have any, not much snow around. We have had a couple little squalls, but it's not really sticking yet, but it is cold and uh, it's another winter here at Silver Bay. We're right, waiting, hoping that the ice will freeze and we'll get some snow and be able to enjoy it. Uh, but we're doing well here and we're glad that you've chosen to join us, so thank you. Yeah, this is um, sort of a, a special time at Silver Bay as we were welcoming our new executive director, uh, Peter Dolliper, uh, to, to be with us. And uh, great to see him around on campus and to have him be a part of, uh, part of our community. We said goodbye to Steve and all the great work Steve uh, did for Silver Bay. Um, well, the winter is a very special time at Silver Bay. There's a time of real quiet but a time of real beauty. And I, I feel so blessed, and I'm sure you guys do too, to be a part of the winters here at, at Silver Bay. And if you ever get a chance to visit Silver Bay in the winter, boy, we, you know, I, I hope it might work for you. Anyway, hope this is a blessing for you. Thanks for being with us today. Yes, uh, could I invite you to open us in prayer? I'd be glad to pray. So, gracious God, there's much to pray for um, as we... Um, share this devotion today from Silver Bay. First, the opportunity to be in the beauty of this place, um, to, be, to be at Silver Bay, uh, to be in front of this warm fire, and to, uh, to reflect on, on the so many years and the tradition um, of so many thousands and tens of thousands of people coming to Silver Bay and being part of this community. In the quiet of this January, we, we give you thanks for this community and that all it has meant for so many people's lives. Lord, we hope today that what we share uh, with scripture and some songs and the opportunity for us to be in fellowship together is a blessing for all of us and for all of those that are watching and at home, online, uh, blessings to you. Uh, we pray for our country. We pray for those that are struggling with, with uh, um, weather-related um, uh, tragedies with, with COVID, with what might be going on. Um, uh, Lord, we just ask your blessing to, to be upon, upon it all. So, Lord, open our hearts today to what you would say to us through the gift of your Holy Spirit. Just fill us with a sense of hope and joy and peace and that we might know the abundant life that you have promised us. So, Lord, with a deep sense of gratitude, we just lift up this prayer as we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, just a reminder, we do record these in advance, so we don't necessarily deal with current events in real time. Uh, so if something big is happening, we may have missed it, but we will get to it when we can. Um, but our message today, this is our first devotional of 2022. Uh, we're just a few days into the new year. And I've chosen a verse from uh, Jeremiah the prophet to help us reflect on, uh, as we approach a new year, how can we grow in our faith as followers of God? And uh, so that's what our plan is for today. Just uh, some reminders about Jeremiah. Uh, he was a prophet, and he lived at this very pivotal time for the people of God. Uh, he was born into a priestly family, and which meant that he would someday be a priest and serve at God's temple. Um, he grew up in the small town of Anatoth, which was just two or three miles away from Jerusalem. So he was very close, raised very close to the center of all of Israel's worship and the hustle and bustle of the big city. Uh, the nation of Israel during his lifetime was under constant threat by foreign powers uh, and eventually during his lifetime would succumb to the Babylonian Empire. Uh, and so he lived in a time of great suffering for his people, uh, and he gave voice in his prophecies to their senses of isolation, 
Uh, they're sometimes feeling abandoned by God. Uh, this intense desire they had for uh, revenge over their enemies and victory uh, in light of all they had suffer, suffered. And so, as I think about Jeremiah's lifetime, a time of upheaval and turmoil, um, it sort of feels similar <laughs> to some of the stuff that's going on in our world. Uh, there's just constant, uh, if you pay a lot of attention to the news, there's always new stuff going on, uh, new strains of COVID and new uh, hurricanes and catastrophes and just on and on and on. And so uh, as I read, I want us to sort of keep that cultural background uh, before us. Uh, as we hear what Jeremiah has to say, let us think about what it might mean for us today. So it's one simple verse. It's Jeremiah 6, chapter 6, um, and I'm going to read verse 16. It says this, Thus says the Lord, Stand at the crossroads and look, and ask for the ancient paths where the good way lies, and walk in it, and find rest for your souls. This is God's word for us today. And I figured because it's so short, I just want to unpack it verse by or phrase by phrase and just talk about what each phrase is, is stating. And so that first phrase, thus says the Lord, it's kind of standard prophetic phrasing. If you read Jeremiah or Isaiah or any of the minor prophets, uh, they'll often use this to say, uh, my message is not my own. Uh, my message comes from God. It gives it uh, the message a greater weight and a greater authority than just some guy speaking his mind. They're saying, I've heard from the Lord on this. And so um, it should give us the desire to hear uh, what the prophet has to say because it's from the Lord. It's not just from his own mind. And uh, so it's God's message for those of us who are willing to listen and willing to hear from the Lord. And he gives a series of commands. The first command is that next phrase. It says, stand at the crossroads. Stand at the crossroads. Now, the command to stand actually uh, implies that, that we're ready to move or to act. Um, we don't stand unless we're going to go and do something. Uh, you don't stand in one spot just doing nothing forever and ever. Uh, there's a sense of readiness. Uh, we need to take a step forward. It's, it's an active posture, I think, to stand at the crossroads. And the crossroads, if you think about it, is a place of decision. Uh, it's a place that requires us to, to plan on which way we're going to go. Are we going to go to the right or the left? Uh, and so you can't choose both roads, not at the same time at least. And it must be one or the other. So this notion that we're to stand at the crossroads... Uh, and uh, it's forcing us to think about what decision we're going to make, which path we're going to take. Both roads may provide challenge. Both roads may provide opportunity. Uh, these only become clear, actually, once you begin down that road. Uh, some things, if you take them right, are only going to happen in that direction. Um, and it's not guaranteed that you can see all the way down that road what the, the the good or bad things are. You have to take a choice and have faith that you're on the right path. And then the next section says, look and ask. That phrase, two additional commands. Stand is the first command, then look and ask. Uh, first, to look means to see, but not merely just have something pass in front of your field of vision. Uh, it means to, to see with discernment what the road might hold. And second, to ask means to seek the counsel of others, uh, those you can trust, uh, those who have wisdom, those who have hard-won experience. So by using our own eyes and intuition and experience, and we combine that with the experience and counsel of others, we can choose the road that is best. Uh, so look and ask. And then it says, for the ancient paths where the good way lies. Whether we like it or not, there's wisdom in the old ways, in the tried and true paths. 
sometimes there, there's wisdom in the new ways, um, but newer is not always better. Um, we do not need to reinvent the wheel, right? The wheel has been invented a long time ago, and it's ancient, and yet functions still quite well in many instances when we need to move things. So it's the same with the paths that we choose. Some may say God's ways seem uh, old-fashioned or outdated. Uh, especially you hear today, um, we tell young people to forge your own path, uh, to don't just get follow the crowd. Um, and there's some truth to that. Um, but God's ways, the ancient paths, are his ways are good, uh, they're noble, they're true, uh, they're tested, and so uh, we should follow the ancient paths. And lastly, he says, walk in it and find rest for your souls. The fourth command, walk in it and find rest for your souls. Many of us know that God's good way, we know it, we've heard about it. We've been to church, we've been uh, to Sunday school, uh, we've read books. Uh, we know that God's way is good, um, but we simply fail to walk in it. Um, and I fail to walk in it all the time. Um, I'm not looking to criticize anyone. It's just sort of human nature. Um, G.K. Chesterton, who is uh, an English Roman Catholic and a philosopher, uh, he has this saying uh, that I like, so I'm going to read it to you. Uh, this is a quote from G.K. Chesterton. The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. Did you hear that? I just think that's great. The Christian ideal has not been found tried, has not been tried and found wanting. Instead, it has been found difficult and left untried. It's my firm belief, uh, as this scripture says, that we will not find rest. Uh, we can only find rest when we try to walk in God's way. There will be difficulties to sure. Uh, to be sure, God's path isn't always straight and flat and easy. Uh, it's there's twists and turns, there's ups and downs, there are rocks and logs in the way that we can stumble over. But it is the best way. Uh, the Lord God will be with us along the path. Uh, the path, God will carry us uh, when we can't go on, and God will give us true rest uh, when we desperately need it. And I think at this time of year, as we're just a few days into the new year, uh, the new year is sort of a crossroads for us. Um, on the one hand, it's just changing the page on a calendar. Uh, it may be one gray winter day on December 31st, and then on January 1st, it may be another gray winter day. There's nothing magical about it, uh, but there is something in us I think that senses each year is an opportunity, uh, an opportunity to do something different, to, to grow, to be better. Um, and so here in the first week of the new year in 2022, we can choose to follow the good and ancient path that God has shown us, or we can choose uh, another path or our own path, um, or choose to follow a path that someone else chooses for us. And I just want to encourage you that God's path leads to rest for our souls and an abundant life. All other paths lead to chaos, disorder, and dissatisfaction. So we stand at the crossroads here at the beginning of 2022. And just want to ask you, which path will you choose? I encourage you to choose the good and ancient way. Uh, and let us start, maybe for the first time, to follow God's path. Uh, for those of us who have been walking it a while, to continue to walk closely with God in 2022. It's up to us. We have to choose which path we're going to take. And I just pray that 2022, you'll be following the good and ancient path that God has provided. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoy where, where you went with that. The quote uh, from Chesterton, what a beautiful quote. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I think about rest for our souls, I mean, I, I, <laughs> rest for our souls. You know, again, as we begin 2022, the idea that can we really know what, re you know, in a busy world and all that's going on, can we really come to know 
what it really means to have rest for our souls. And in our faith, that's exactly what one of the things we rest for our souls. I, I've been reflecting on uh, a bit, you know, the busyness of life. Sarah and my wife and I, busyness of life. And, and we've really um, uh, attempted to and are, are really going to make a, a, a real effort to think about how we really do find more rest. And I'm not talking about taking a nap or something like that. I'm just talking about opportunities to drop into a, a place where I don't feel like I need to be productive all the time. You know, I don't need to be producing something. I don't need to be. And in the, in the, in the opportunity that I have to do spiritual direction with people, um, so much of that work is, is focused on how to sort of carve out some time in our life that is not so work-related or, or producing something or achieving something or trying to over, you know, and, 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 and how to just gently feel the blessing that God is for us, rest for our soul. And then just the, the thought about, you know, choosing the path. Golly, you know, you see some lives, and I, I don't mean this judgmentally, but some lives have chosen certain paths and have ended up in some pretty difficult places. And other people have made other choices and have really, you know, come to know something about a really beautifully contented life. And what I think about when I think about that is just that there have been people in my life that have really over the years, I mean, I didn't make all the right choices, but there have been people in my life that have really helped me make good choices in the path. And I guess I would encourage myself and us and, you know, seek out when, you, when you're coming to a place in your life where you're wondering, go this way or go that way, it's okay to ask somebody who you trust and who might be able to help you make a choice about that, to make a good choice, a good path. And um, because I think that, that that's such a blessing to have friends or support or people that, that can support you on decisions like that. Because, boy, if you went this way, that would mean this, 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 and this, and this. And if you go that way, it means that, 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 and that. You know, anyway, the power of choice and the power of the good path is such an important one. So I really appreciated your message, Gar. Thank you. Thank you. And you reminded me as you were talking about even the idea that we're not alone on the path, that, that I think that's what you were getting at, is we're, we need guides. And so um, that's what a spiritual director can be. That's what a good friend can be, a spouse or someone close to you. Um, it's good to have company on the path. And, and sometimes, uh, the people that get off on the wrong path, they just don't have the community support around them that, to help them get on the right path or to, to make the good choices. And um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I can't help it. I don't want to belabor it too long, but it, it really brings Silver Bay into the picture that, that the choice that my neighbor had in 1963 to come work on the staff, her choice, and then her to say to me, you know, you might want to go to this place, it's pretty special. And when I came with an imp in 1970, um, when you think about Silver Bay and how people got on this path yeah. and came to this place, Austin has a story to tell about that, and you have yeah. a story to tell about that. I'm part of you, you, you and I have a good yeah. story to tell about yeah. that. We can tell that story someday. Um, but the idea that, that whoever helped us get onto this path and to be part of this community and the number of people's lives that have been infused with a, the good path mm -hmm. by being connected to this community, I think is such a beautiful story about Silver yeah. Bay that way, you know. Good. Anyway. Thank you. Shall we sing? Sure. <clears throat> So please join me as we sing this, uh, as we always do this beautiful little song, Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence 
of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings, glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings, glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you for uh, your word from the prophet Jeremiah uh, that reminds us that you have uh, given us both uh, freedom, freedom to choose the paths that we walk, and guidance. Uh, you've told us what the good path looks like, and those who follow it um, are not exempt from all of life's problems and troubles, uh, but they have you along the path to guide them through it. And so we thank you uh, for that, for the good path, for your guidance, for the guides that you provide in our lives, spiritual directors, pastors, friends and family, etc. cetera. Uh, Lord, we're grateful uh, for Silver Bay. We thank you for uh, this beautiful stretch of shoreline uh, along Lake George and the Adirondack Park uh, that so many years ago was uh, set aside for a YMCA where people could come uh, and find rest for their souls, where they could retreat from their daily lives and reconnect with you, uh, connect with nature and the beauty of your creation, uh, connect with your people uh, who have come here year after year. And so, Lord, we pray as we enter this new year uh, for Silver Bay, that you would meet all of our organization's needs. Uh, we pray for Peter as he comes on board and leads the organization into the future, that you would bless him, uh, give him wisdom and strength and guidance, and help us as a staff to uh, be ready for the new uh, paths that you bring us on here at Silver Bay. Uh, Lord, we're grateful for this place. We're grateful for the people who are watching, and we pray a blessing over them. We know that Silver Bay is more than just a place they spend a few days at in the summer. Uh, it's a place that's meaningful throughout the year. And so uh, we're grateful for the opportunity to sing and pray and look at our, uh, your word together. Uh, bless each Silver Bay community member uh, here, nearby, and around the world. Lord, thank you that you care for us uh, in big and small ways and that you uh, are uh, guiding our lives. Uh, a long paths for your name's, namesake. Uh, bless us as we go. We love you. We thank you. We pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Should we sing another song? Beautiful little song. We do it in the summer quite a bit, and uh, please uh, join along. It's uh, uh, the gift of love. Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire. And have not love, my words are vain and sounding bright and hopeless gain. Though I may give. Yeah. 
striving so. My love profess and have not love, but love within a prophet soon. Strangely thin. Come, Spirit, come, our hearts control. Our spirit long to be made whole, but in Thanks, Bruce. Uh, Let us hear the benediction. God of all time, help us to enter the new year quietly, thoughtful of who we are to ourselves and to others, mindful that our steps make an impact and our words carry power. May we walk gently. May we speak only after we have listened well. Creator of all life, help us to enter the new year reverently, aware that you have endowed every creature and every plant, every person and habitat with beauty and purpose. May we regard the world with tenderness. May we honor rather than destroy. Lover of all souls, help us to enter the new year joyfully, willing to laugh and dance and dream, remembering our many gifts with thanks and looking forward to the blessings yet to come. May we welcome your lavish love for us. In the new year, may the grace and peace of Christ Jesus bless us now and in the days ahead. Amen. Amen. And as always, let's close with uh, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Loving counsels up but hold you With a shepherd's care enfold you God be with you till we meet again God be with you till we meet again Keep love's banner floating o'er you Smite death's threatening wave before Thank you, Bruce, and thank you all. Uh, We do pray that God indeed will be with you until we meet again. Uh, These devotionals are are posted on Wednesdays at noon uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Feel free to join with us at noon uh, or uh, whenever's convenient for you. Uh, They're there uh, afterwards and you can watch them at your convenience. Uh, Thank you so much for your willingness to spend some time with us. Uh, We do pray that this new year will be a blessing to you, uh, that every good thing uh, that God has for you will come to you and uh, you'll be blessed. Thank you. Hmm. You know, and as we turn the calendar to January, it it seems like it's so much closer to a summer and so much closer to warmer weather in terms of that. Now, it's not right around the corner, but but the calendar starts to sort of move towards... um, you know, the, the days are actually getting a little longer uh, and uh, um, the opportunity for, um, for us here at Silver Bay to think about and plan on this coming summer. It's the 100th anniversary of the chapel that we're, that we're looking forward to celebrating in, uh, in uh, 2022, uh, which we're in now. So anyway, thank you so much for being with us today. How blessed we are to offer these. And, May all be well with you. Blessings and prayers to you. And um, God be with you till we meet again. Bye now.